Okay, so we're going to study the next section, which has to do with matrices. And uh, before we get started into more of the specific problems, I just want to show you this might be helpful that now that we know how matrices work, in particular matrix multiplication, one of the things we can do with matrices is we can take, for example, a system of equations like this, 2x plus 3y equals 5, 7x minus 4y equals 3, and we can write this in matrix form. So let me show you how this looks. This same system could be expressed like this. I could take the matrix that's made up of the coefficients of x and y, 2, 3, 7, negative 4, take that matrix, okay, which is, okay, remember matrix uh, dimensions, that's a two by two matrix, multiply that by a two by one matrix, which is just going to be made up of X, Y, and that will equal, okay, remember how when we multiply the, if these two numbers match up, that tells me we can, tells us we can multiply the matrices and the dimensions of our matrix will be the outer numbers here. So I'm gonna end up with a two by one and guess what? That two by one would be five, three, my answer. Now think backwards now how this works, right? If I were to multiply this two by two by a two by one, we would take this first row times this column and that gives me two X plus three Y. And because that was the first row times the column, that would equal this top number, five. And that's exactly what that top equation says. 2x plus 3y equals five. 2x plus 3y equals five. Likewise, this, the bottom equation could be written, could be expressed if I took the bottom row, 7x minus 4y, that should equal three, which is my bottom number. So, right, so you can take any system of equations. So say you had one like this, let's, let's work it the other way around. If I had the following matrix equation, if I had five, one, negative two, zero, three, four, two, zero, one, and I multiplied this by X, Y, Z, and let's say that was equal to I don't know, eight, six, negative four. We could um, work backwards now and let's see what this is saying. This is describing a system of three equations and three unknowns. How do I know that? Well, if I take this first row, this is a three by three matrix multiplied by a three by one, which is gonna give me a three by one matrix. And how I would get these numbers here is I would multiply the row times the column. So 5x plus 1y minus 2z would have to equal 8. That's one equation. Let's slide this up. Second row times the column, 0x plus 3y plus 4z would have to equal 6. So that's really just 3y plus four Z equals six. And then the bottom equation, two X plus zero Y plus Z, two X really just plus Z would have to equal my bottom number, which is negative four. Okay. So I think this is helpful because the next section, they kind of just, they, they, they're, they're showing you how these could be turned into equations, but they don't really explain that. So. Um, so that's what's going on. So the, the next section is actually modeling with matrices. And um, the notes I have for this are kind of long. There's a lot of information. Um, so let me just share with you, if you want to get this information and follow along here, you could even print this out if you wanted to, it might make it easier, is I have this on my website. So let me just share that really fast. Um, most of you know how to find my website. Uh, you, it's on the Canvas page, or you can just Google, Google my name. If you go to the 17B new book, the one we're using, Stuart, and where I am is, where am I? <laughs> right here. 
Okay, modeling with matrices class handout. That's what we're doing. And it's exactly the sheet that um, we're working on right here. Okay. So if you wanted to take, pause the video, print that out, or at least pull it up um, so you have the information there, um, that's probably a good thing to do. Okay. So here is one. application of modeling matrices, it's kind of a more famous one here, is this idea of Leslie matrices is just a name given to a scientist who came up with this idea to study populations over generations in, in, in populations in different age classes. Okay, so let me explain what's going on here. Let's say we're talking about a population, and it always helps me to to give it some kind of a context here. So uh, my favorite one to use here, and you'll see why in a second, is, is uh, let's pretend we're, we're, uh, we're studying a population of sea turtles. Turtles, there we go. Sea turtles. <clears throat> All right, and so if you were studying a population of sea turtles, what you might wanna do is sort out your studying, you're keeping track of the population sizes into like different age classes. So for example, we might call n of z, we might call zero, n zero of t, the number of zero year old females. Now that's kind of, of course, zero year olds, they're not even, there's no age here, but what we might mean by that, for example, are um, uh, infant, right, or baby, babies, right? Maybe these are baby sea turtles. Um, we might have another age class for one-year-old females, and maybe those are, are uh, young adults, right? Teenagers and young adults. And then a third age class, which is like your older, your elders, right? Elder turtles. Um, ones who've kind of gotten towards the end of their life. So you might want to break them up into age classes. And what we're interested in is what's going to happen with our population of sea turtles over time in each age class, right? If we give you a starting amount of how many babies, young adults, and elder turtles we have, you know, what's going to happen? What are the dynamics? And that's going to depend on what you've noticed as a scientist. So let's assume that 20% of your zero-year-old females, the babies. Oh, by the way, sorry guys, but uh, when we, Leslie matrices, when they're studying populations, usually we just focus on the females. They're the ones who are bringing in the next generation of sea turtles, right? Um, so it, it's all about the females here, okay? <laughs> um, so let's assume that 20% of the baby female turtles survive to me make it to age one okay and that's why i chose sea turtles uh, I, I don't know if any of you have seen um there's documentaries i'd like to watch uh on sometimes on tv and i remember watching one on sea turtles and it's it, it's really sad they're born on land and when they uh come out of their shell at some point they make a mad dash for the ocean and a lot of times they're just open prey for for birds and other predators and so um, you know, I've watched this documentary, and it's just sad to see that so many of them don't make it, but enough do, right, to keep the population going. That's what made me think of this as turtles. It's a very low survival percentage, but, uh, you know, we'll just work with that. So 20% of the baby females survive to the next age class. Eight, we'll call them, okay, babies is zero-year-olds, young adults is one-year-olds, elders are two-year-olds. Of course, that doesn't mean they're literally two years old, right? It's just a way to describe it. 70% of your one-year-old females, your young adults, make it to the elder stage, age two. Okay, so that's a pretty high survival rate. And of course, this is your elder stage, so all of them are going to die after that uh, um, age classification, okay? So we could express this, these dynamics with an equation. And this might sound kind of familiar, like from 17a, you might remember the idea of a recursion, which tells you how do you get from one term to the next. And you might remember it looked like a sub n plus one, or in this case, n sub t plus one. 
what this is saying is my next generation, right? For one-year-olds, my next generation, next generation of one-year-olds, where do they come from? They come from the 20% of the zero-year-olds from the previous generation, right? That's describing this right here. The next generation of one-year-olds come from the 20% of the baby turtles that make it to age one. What about your next generation of elder turtles? They come from the 70% of the one-year-olds that survive from the previous generation. Okay. What else is gonna to contribute to the next generation of sea turtles? It's the number of babies, right? The number of offspring. And so we, let's just pretend we have this information. Uh, there we go. So it makes sense that the next generation, the next generation of zero-year-olds, the new babies, comes from the number of offspring from the one-year-old turtles, the young adults, and the older turtles. So, and then whereas in this case, we'll assume that I had a little fun here, that the zero-year-old females are not mature enough yet to reproduce. And uh, sorry, a little <laughs> for the guys there. And of course, the zero-year-old dads are just, they're not going to be mature enough to be good dads anyhow, right? So <laughs> let's pretend that they're not reproducing, okay? And let's, so let's assume that the one-year-old females have an average of three female offspring, and the two-year-olds have an average of two offspring, female, of course. So then we could also express then the next generation of zero-year-olds comes from every one-year-old female is having an average of three offspring, and every two-year-old female is having an average of two. So it would be two times n of two and three times n of one, n sub one. Okay. So we could express this all as a matrix equation, like I showed you before. So we could say, and it's all right here, the next generation of zero-year-olds. But what we have to think about is we're gonna, we're gonna put, we're gonna write this as a matrix equation and it's gonna look the, as the following. I'm gonna have a zero, a three and a two in this first row. Think about it. If I multiply this row by this column, that is going to give me zero times n sub zero, three times the number of one-year-olds and two times the number of two-year-olds. That's exactly this equation right here. The next generation of zero-year-olds, they're not, I'm not getting them from zero-year-olds, right? That's why there's a zero here. Okay. For the next generation of one-year-olds, we have that information right here. It's 20%, so I could write that as 0 0.20 times the number of zero-year-olds, and that's it. So I would have a zero here and a zero here, because when I multiply this out, that's 20% times n sub zero, zero, zero for each of those. And then finally, my next generation of two-year-olds is coming from the 70% of one-year-olds that survive. So you have to think about which number is gonna get multiplied by n sub one. It's gonna be the middle number, right? It's gonna be 0.7 right here. So this would be zero, this would be zero. Okay. So this matrix has all the information of the population dynamics, right? So that's the key information, right? Of course, we have to multiply it by the number of zero-year-olds, one-year-olds, and two-year-olds to get this, but this is the matrix that has all of the key information. And when we're applying it to <coughs> um, a population model like this, it's usually referred to as a Leslie matrix. <coughs> really right now in this section, we're not gonna go as far as what I'm gonna do next, but I just feel like it's important so you see what's happening here. So for example, Let's assume that we had a starting population of 2,000 females of age zero, 800 females of age one, and 200 females of age two. And I wanted to find out how many females in each category I would have after one year or the next generation, however you want to interpret our time. So what I would do is take this Leslie matrix where I have all the dynamics, zero, three, two, 0 0.2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.7, and then another zero. And I would multiply it by, 
let's try blue here. What we're basically giving you is this right here, your initial population. So I would have, that pen doesn't work either. Let's try red. <laughs> so I would have 2,800 and then 200 two-year-olds. So I'm just, those are just these numbers here. And see if I multiply this out, Okay, practice multiplication, I would have zero times this, three times 800 plus two times 200. And we'll simplify that in a second, but that's gonna be the number of zero year olds in my next generation. Well, we might as well do that now. That's 2,400 plus 400. I would have 2,800 zero-year-olds in my next generation. For the number of one-year-olds, that's gonna be come from this row times my column here. So that's 20% of 2,000 is 400. And then the other two get multiplied by zero. So that's actually it. So I would have 400 one-year-olds in my next generation. And then uh, my number of two-year-olds is going to be zero, 70% of 800, and then zero times 200, 70% of 800 is 560. And you could keep going with this, right? This is the idea of a Leslie matrix. If we assume that these data in terms of the uh, number of offspring and the survival rates for, for the one-year-olds and two-year-olds is true for every generation, I can just keep multiplying my Leslie matrix by this population. So if I wanted to find how many females in each age class for the second year and the number of one-year-olds in my second year, the number of two-year-olds in my second year, I'm just going to take this Leslie matrix again equals, put an equals in between there, equals 0, 3, 2, 20%, 0, 0, 0, 70%, 0, times, this is my, this is my one-year-old population, right? After one year, this is my population, I should say, after one year, one time unit. Um, so I would have the 2,800 here, 400, and the 560. Let's see if we can just do these numbers in our head so we can. So the number next generation of zero year olds is going to have zero times 2800, three times 400 is 1200, plus two times 560. That is, uh, that is 1120. 1200 plus 1120, I think that's 3120. Is that right? I might be wrong. 2320, I cannot, <laughs> 2320. Yeah, that seemed a little bit big, 2320. Uh, this will be easier. The number next generation of one-year-olds is gonna be 20% of my new population of zero-year-olds. Uh, and that's gonna be 20% of 2800 is 560. And then my number of two-year-olds after two years is going to be zero, 70% of 400, which is 280, and then that'll be zero as well. And so later on, we're gonna learn more about matrices um, in the coming, the last couple of weeks here. Here's a curiosity question, right? We started with 2,000, zero-year-olds, 800 one-year-olds, and only 200 two-year-olds. After one year, look what happened. We got more zero-year-olds, but look what happened to our one-year-old population. It got cut in half. My two-year-old population got bigger. When we run those dynamics again, look what happened. Well, now my zero-year-old population went down a little bit. My one-year-old population made a rebound, right? It's gaining some, it's 560. And now my two-year-old population has now declined again, right? It's back down to 280. So a good question you might wanna have is what's going to happen long-term to each of my age class populations, right? Is, is one gonna dominate over the other? Are they gonna 
you know, just keep continuing to go increase and then decrease, increase and decrease. So the long-term dynamics are going to be what we're going to be interested in. And we will get into that later on. We'll be able to analyze this using some tools later on. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do, if you have downloaded the notes here, this chapter isn't all about Leslie matrices. That's just my favorite way to introduce this section because uh, they are kind of interesting. So let's take another situation here. Let's go to problem three, because here's really what you're mostly going to be doing in this section. But let's, this is also still, um, this problem still has to do with the idea of uh, a population divided into age classes and um, you know, survival percentages and offspring rates. Um, so we're going to set up our matrix uh, equation that we could use to describe this. Okay, so let's read through it. Assume the population is divided. This time we have four age classes. 65% of females age zero, 40% uh, of age females age one, and 30% of the two-year-olds survive until the end of the next breeding season. Then we've got some information about the offspring. One-year-olds have an average of three female offspring, two-year-olds have seven female offspring, and three-year-olds have four offspring, okay? So there's a lot of data here, right? And so one way to kind of organize this, this is what the book is uh, really focusing on here, is the idea that you could put this all in a matrix diagram Meaning, let's just kind of re-summarize all this information, and here's one way to do it. If I make sort of a circle here, we have zero-year-olds, one-year-olds, two-year-olds, three-year-olds. Okay. And we can, we can describe what's happening like this. Okay, think about this. If 65% of the zero-year-olds survive to the next breeding cycle, that means the number of one-year-olds is coming from the number of zero-year-olds at a rate of 0.65, right? So we could have an arrow going like this. Similarly, 40% of the one-year-olds go to the two-year-old age classification. So this would be 0.4 and 30% of the two-year-olds go to their next um, age class. So that's 30% there, right? You're never gonna skip, right? You can't go from zero-year-olds to two-year-olds in this context, right? You go to the next age class, okay? Then we know that one-year-olds have an average of three female offspring. Where are they going? That, that means they're contributing to the next generation of zero-year-olds, right? Three, times the number of one-year-olds are, are gonna become zero-year-olds in the next generation. Likewise, two-year-olds are having seven offspring. So I'd have an arrow there, right? They're becoming newborns and three-year-olds have an average of four offspring. So a matrix diagram would look something like that, that kind of summarizes all the information. And what you could do with this is set up your matrix. You could say, all right, if I wanted to know the number of zero-year-olds in the next generation, the number of one-year-olds in the next generation, so if I thought of this as a matrix, I could put all of these numbers into our matrix this time it's going to be a four by four right because i've got four age classes and remember this would all get multiplied by the number of zero year olds in the previous um age class or time previous time period sorry and it's really this part right here that we're really focused on they want you to be able to take a problem like this write it as a, a matrix diagram and then turn it actually turn it into a matrix so how does this look your top row remember that's going to give you the number of zero year olds 
And so this row is going to get multiplied by zero-year-olds, one-year-olds, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, and give me the next generation of zero-year-olds. So where am I getting all my next zero-year-olds? They're coming from one-year-olds, two-year-olds, and three-year-olds. So that means in this row, I'm not going to have anything for, I'm going to have zero here because I'm not getting zero-year-olds from zero-year-olds, right? But I am getting three new zero-year-olds from my one-year-olds, seven from the two-year-olds, and four from the three-year-olds. How am I getting my next generation of one-year-olds? That's only coming from the 65% of zero-year-olds that survive. And so the, this row right here gets multiplied by this. Where should the 65 be? It should be the very first number because that's going to get multiplied by the number of zero-year-olds. And I'm not getting more one-year-olds from one-year-olds, two-year-olds, or three-year-olds. So these are all going to be zeros. Two-year-olds are coming from the 40% of one-year-olds that make it. So where should that 0.4 go? That should go in the second slot because the way we multiply, that's what would get multiplied by the number of one-year-olds to become two-year-olds. And then these will be zero. And then finally, the number of three-year-olds are coming from the number of two-year-olds, which would be 0.3 in the third slot. This is often how, if it's a pure Leslie matrix, you'll, you'll kind of have this form where this is basically your offspring and your survival ratios, and they usually are going to go in a diagonal just based on the way we multiply. And uh, again, I, this part, I stole these notes from something we are going to do later on. Let's not worry about, you know, if you had numbers like so many females of age zero, age one, uh, age two and age three, you could put that in right here and calculate, multiply out and find out what your population is um, in the next generation. Uh, that's kind of, more of that's coming later. Right now, it's more about setting up the matrix diagram. This one is from the book. Don't remember what number. Consider a population of women. So now we're not talking about Leslie matrices anymore. Um, population of women at risk for developing breast cancer. Each individual's health status can be uh, in one of three states, healthy, early stage disease, or late stage disease. And we've got a bunch of information. Each year, 0.3% of the healthy uh, women develop early stage disease with the re rest remaining healthy. 68% of women with early stage disease recover through treatment, while the remaining 32% go into the late stage of the disease. And then finally, 15% of women with late stage disease revert back to the early stage disease. So maybe they get treatment while the re rest remain in late stage. So we're gonna use H of T for healthy, E of T for early state disease, and L of T for late stage disease to denote the number of individuals in each state. And the first thing is to construct a matrix diagram. So we're gonna, just like we did for the last one, we'll have H of T, E of T, L of T. All right, and we can start to fill this in. So 0.3% of the healthy women go into the early stage disease. So remember as a percent, 0.3% is 0 0.003, right? 3% is 0 0.03. So this is 0 0.003. Go here. Uh, well, and this is the other thing to remember. We have to keep track of everybody. So if, if only 0 0.003 go to the early stage cancer, that means the remaining 99.7% stay in the healthy state. So the way we can denote that is just like it's recycling, right? And we have 0.997 coming back in the next uh, in the next. Uh, time period, okay? Um, okay, so for the next sentence, 68% of women with early stage 
recover through treatment, recover through treatment. So So I guess what that means is they're coming back, right? They're coming back this way. 68% they recover and they're in the healthy. That's 0.68. While the remaining 32% go into late-term disease. So this would be 0.32. And um, Okay, so that's accounting for everybody, right? That adds up to 100%. So then 15% with late stage revert to the early stage. So we know 15% are coming back to here, 0.15. But that means, that means the remaining 85% stay in late stage. So we're gonna have to have something coming back here. This would be 0.85. Okay. And so with this, like if we wanted to study this over time periods, right, with these dynamics, just like with the Leslie matrix, we could set up a system of difference of equations. And right now, okay, for this type of a question, we're not going to put this in matrix form. We're just going to describe what's happening. My next generation of, that's, I didn't mean to write a T there. My next generation of healthy women are coming from 99.997% of the previous healthy people stay in the healthy uh, state. Um, but I'm also getting 68% of the people in early treatment. My next generation in the early treatment stage come from the 3%, 0.003 in the healthy group, and 15% from the late stage. So I'm gonna separate that out a little bit because this is, we're trying to, you'll see why in a second. So 0.15 L of T, leave a blank there because there's none, they're not coming back from each other, right? So I'm gonna leave the E in the middle blank here. And my next group of late term, Cancer patients come from 32%, so that'll put that in the middle of the early stage group, plus 85% that were in the late stage group before. So that's what they mean by a difference equation. That's It's basically uh, telling you how you get to your next group from the previous groups. Now for a matrix model, they don't actually mean yet. I showed you how to multiply matrices, uh, but we're not actually doing that yet. In other words, the part they want, like if I were to turn this into a matrix equation, like we just did, if I were to write H sub T plus one, E sub T plus one, L sub T plus one, like a matrix equation equals a big, matrix here times h of t e of t l of t l of t there we go so i have to kind of cram this in here i don't have a lot of room all they really want is this when they want write the matrix model they just want this matrix right here okay but it's important to think about what where that's what that's standing for right that's that's what you would multiply H of T, E of T, L of T to get to the next group of healthy early stage and late stage. But essentially all they want, what would these be? These would just be the numbers, right? This would just be the 0 0.997, 0 0.68, E of T. And then there aren't any from the L, right? So this would be a zero here. You do need to have something for each um, term, H, E, and L. For E, for my next generation of early stage, I'm going to have 0 0.003, 0, right? Because there's no E here, and then 0.15. And then for L, it would be 0 0.32, 0 0.85. So this is what they want with the matrix model, just this matrix right there.
And what you also should be able to do then is now without even, without even uh, any context here, here's a different, somebody constructed a matrix diagram with these dynamics. And what you're supposed to do is come up with the matrix model. And so now that you've seen how this works, right? <clears throat> there would be three age classes here. So you have to imagine there would be, you know, this would get multiplied by A of T, B of T, C of T. And this would, when I multiply, it's going to give me A of T plus one, B of T plus one, C sub T plus one. But again, all we really want is this. And so how do we write this? Well, the next generation of A comes from 4C, 4C, so this would be 0, 0, 4. How is B's population being determined? Well, they're getting one from A, so that's going to go right here. Two from itself, and that's it. And then for C, What's contributing to C's population? It's just three from B, so none from A. So this would be zero, three, zero. Let's try one more. This one's a kind of involved too. And this might be good practice if you, if you, I know it's only been done one, well, maybe a couple examples. See if you can pause the video, see if you can set this one up. Your matrix diagram should be a four by four matrix. So if you want to pause and give it a try. All right, so you're you, hopefully you're kind of seeing how this works. Is I mean, let me be, go back here. Basically, in your first row here, you want to how is A changing, right? How where is this is describing how A is changing, right? A's uh, dynamics. That's kind of the, the the word that we're using here. And then this is describing B's dynamics, and this is describing C's dynamics. So you'd have the same thing here, right? A for the top row, B, C, and D here. So what's happening with A? A's population is contributing to itself by a factor of one. Okay. Uh, and that's kind of it, huh? A is contributing to B's population and to C's population. So that means I would have zeros all the way across. For B, B is getting three units from A. I have no context here, right? Three units from A, six from itself, uh, five from D. So D would be the last one here, right? So this would be five and this would be zero. It's not getting anything from C. And then for C, that's coming four from A and eight from D. So none from B, none from itself, eight from D. And then finally from D, D is not, D is pretty much just giving, huh? <laughs> so I think for D, you're gonna have there, its population is not growing at all, right? It's gonna be a bunch of zeros there. This was a D, believe it or not. And then one last thing here uh, that we should be able to do it the other way. So say you have a matrix diagram, just like we just built, we should be able to go backwards and think about what the corresponding matrix diagram was. So here you would have had two groups and maybe here, since I got a little space, let's, let's just diagram this out. Let's say, let's use A and B. So what this would be is telling me is my next generation of A, my next generation of B, 
would equal this matrix times my previous matrix of my previous population size of A and my previous population size of B. And you can even write this out. If it's helpful, you might even write it out. A sub T plus one is equal to one A sub T plus seven B sub T. B sub T plus one is equal to four A sub T and then zero, right? Just that. So that might be helpful for drawing the matrix diagram. Here's A, here's B. How is A's population growing? Well, it's contributing to its own population. One times whatever the population of A was before. And it's getting seven units of population from B. So we'd have a seven there. And then B's population is coming from four times whatever A's population is. So there's your matrix diagram for this one. And one more chance for practice. If you got that, try doing this one. Pause the video. See if you can set up the matrix diagram for that one. Okay, and we'll assume that you've done that. <laughs> um, so we're going to have three age classes here. or classes, doesn't have to be age classes, three classes of whatever. Um, we might, might not be studying ages like we saw in the previous problem. We might be studying uh, uh, stages of cancer, right? Um, it, it, I think this is really helpful. If you, if they, I guess the goal would be at some point to be able to just look at these numbers and be able to draw those arrows, but it really, I find it helpful to, write out the equations, right? This is a sub t plus one, b sub t plus one, and now we have a c sub t plus one equals this matrix times a sub t, b sub t, c sub t. So one equation I would have, I'm gonna write it up here, a sub t plus one is equal to three a t, a sub t, zero b sub t, and two c sub t. b sub t plus one is equal to two a sub t plus five b sub t plus one c sub t. And then I'm gonna see if I can squeeze this in here. c sub t plus one is equal to eight a sub t plus four b sub t and then nothing from c, c itself. Because once you get to here, this should be really easy. How is A changing? It's contributing three to itself. So this would be a three and it's getting two from C. B is getting two from A. Five from itself. So we'll fit in a little arrow like this. And one from C. And then C is getting eight from A. However you can, there's no real way like where I put this, you know, coming back, wherever it fits, right? As long as you draw an arrow. So C is getting eight from A. So I'll have that coming this way. And four from B. So your matrix diagram would look something like that. And, and I mean, hopefully see here that, I, mean, I think the idea right here now is that a matrix can help you kind of organize all of that information, right? Into a nice tidy matrix. Um, so, and same with this, this is a way of organizing and sketching out what's happening as well. So, all right, we'll talk more on Monday. Hopefully this is helpful for your homework and for your studying. So see you then. Bye-bye.